Test one, test two. Brad, you good? Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back out. Hope everybody had a nice weekend and looking forward to a great week of Hard Rocker Athletics. Thanks to Pancheros. Great burritos, as usual, fresh burritos. We appreciate everybody coming today. A little cooler today. You can't talk about uh, the weather too long. Tom Mann said I needed to talk about it a little bit. But it's going to be back up to 80 by this weekend, Tom, so we'll be okay. Um, looking forward to the weekend, by the way. Hard Rocker Soccer was at home this past weekend. They go on the road. Uh, volleyball, busy tonight at Black Hill State, and then uh, at home this weekend. And then Hard Rocker Football gets going back on the road down to Colorado Mines for a big matchup. And cross-country team was down at Fort Hayes State. We'll recap that with Coach Johnson, and, and they get set for the RMAC Championships coming up in a couple of weekends. So busy time right now. We'll start it today with the soccer program, another tight weekend for them, and now they just interchange. They played at home this past weekend. They'll play the same two schools on the road this weekend. Welcome up head coach of the soccer team, Jordan Cadlick. Thank you. Yep, Friday we had uh, Metro State at home. And like I mentioned last week, they were ranked in the top 25 for the past couple of weeks. So um, I can't remember when we gave up our first goal, but I believe it was in the in the first half. But overall, tactically, the first half was very sound. We we executed our game plan. But uh, within that game plan, we said that when they won that ball, when, when they won the ball from us, they were going to get forward and be extremely direct. And that's exactly how they scored their goal. So to give up a goal in that from that standpoint is is a little bit disappointing, but. Um, to end up tying our, uh, yeah, we scored a tying goal in the 71st minute and ended up taking them to overtime and lost in the second, first or second minute of overtime. And that goal was um, about the epitome of how our, how our overtimes have been going is we'll give up a goal in the first uh, minute overtime and it'll be the exact same shot from about uh, 20 yards out and that results in our guys not closing down. So what happens there is our back, as our midfield gets a bit deeper into our back line, and we ended up don't, uh, not stepping out and closing the space. So uh, the guy hit a pretty good shot. Um, was it savable? That's questionable or not, but we can't do much about it now. So uh, came back on Sunday against uh, UCCS. They're another very good team. Individually, they're, they're very good. Uh, tactically, I don't think they're the most sound team in the world, but um, we've talked all year about Justin Barco. He's our freshman, uh, second in the conference in shots. And he was just shut down that entire game. So um, wh what that tells us is we need to stop relying so much on him and trying to find other guys who are going to step up and try to maybe help him out offensively. Because d defensively, our back line has been doing a really good job. I think our uh, goal differential is down at least 10 goals at this point in the season. Um, so now we just need to find some help up top for Justin. But uh, tactically, again, we were very good that game. And uh, the second half, on a uh, two-game weekend, was it was one of the more uh, uninspired efforts that both teams have had, I would say, from what we've seen. And um, they ended up putting one away in the middle of the second half, which kind of just sealed the sealed the win for for them. So Friday we go and play Metro State again at their place, uh, 7 p.m. kickoff under the lights. So hopefully that'll be a <coughs> excuse me a packed crowd. And um, tactically, we're going to go ahead with the same game plan. Uh, just sit back and defend and absorb their pressure and try to counter as much as we can. And we think that if we do find someone up top that can help Justin out a bit, we're going to have a bit more success uh, with that one. And then Sunday we go to UCCS, play them down in Colorado Springs. And um, that's kind of the game where we need to figure figure out what to do and how to attack them. That's what uh, Coach Conniff and I are going to focus on uh, this week. And um, I think one of the two games we should hopefully be able to get a result out of. So. Before we go to questions, we uh, the we had six people get on the all academic RMAC team. Uh, Eric Fenske made the first team, which with a, like a 3.96 GPA, and then we had six others on the on the honorable mention. So congratulations to those guys. We're very proud of their efforts in the classroom. So, any questions? Joel. I would say, you know, in their scouting report that we have for them, they're probably the smallest back line in the conference. They're all about between 5'10 and 6 foot, and usually you'll have guys like Eric Fenske who are around 6'3. Um, but individually, 
their individual defending top to bottom was some of the best we've seen. So that means that they just that one on one, I'd put Justin up just about up against just about anybody. But UCCS, I mean, they were just they shut him down all day. So that was very tough for us to get something going there. Yeah, um, we're probably leading the conference in yellow cards right now. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I mean, we got to be physical in the way we play and fast pace and, and defending so much. We're gonna that's gonna happen. Was it the most physical? I'd say uh, University of Mary game, our second game of the season, probably comes to mind as one of the most physical. But but yeah, in the, in the RMAC, they're they're a very physical team, and so are we. So that was like you said, was like a rugby match. Lars, you got anything for me today? All right. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. Hard Rocker Cross Country went to Fort Hayes and uh, getting set a couple weeks away from the big RMAC championships. Welcome up, Steve Johnson. Thank you. Yeah, Fort Hayes State. Uh, Good nine hour road trip and then uh, hop off the bus and take them out for a run just to loosen up a little bit. Uh, the weather was gorgeous. Uh, it was nice and cool on Saturday morning when we got to start. And uh, as always, it was a fast race. And unfortunately for us on the women's side, that kind of got away from us a little bit. Um, I think we we got a little too accustomed to to doing doing our thing in the small meets. and. And it got away from us just a little bit. This is a shot of Addie about a uh, mile and a half into the race. And, and she actually just kept working her way up the field. Um, this was definitely the fastest uh, start that we've had for, <coughs> excuse me, for any of our races this season. We had, I think, four of our girls go under six minutes for their first mile, which um, I've got a couple of those girls who their PRs are only about 10 seconds under six minutes. So starting out that fast is is definitely a, a bit of a change for them, but it's something that we've got to do and we've got to make sure that uh, that we're ready for it. Uh, they fought really hard through the race and I think what got us ultimately was just a, a few too many surges in the middle of the race and just not quite being ready for it. Um, but we ran well, we, were, we, were, we knew if we got a top 10 finish, we'd be solid. Uh, we finished 11th, um, just about 20 points out of out of 10th. So so we were satisfied with that, but it just felt like overall energy-wise we were a little bit flat on the day. Uh, Addie ran a really strong race. She ran uh, about a minute about a, a minute four faster than she did two years ago on the same course, and it probably ran a little bit slower today than it or on Saturday than it did that day. So that was a really good performance. That put her 17th in the field. Um, and that's a field that's um, basically anybody in the top, anybody in the top 20s at that race has a shot at qualifying for the national meet. So um, whether that's as a team or as an individual. And so that definitely is a good sign for us going forward. Uh, that really gives us a lot of confidence with what she can do. We had one of our other uh, juniors, Riley Sutton, PR'd by, by about a minute as well over, over the, her time from two years ago. Uh, so we definitely got some, a couple of good performances. We just got to put it all together on the same day. But <laughs> frankly, I'd rather get that out of our systems now than at the conference meet or at the region. So uh, from that standpoint, you know, not quite what we were expecting, but all things considered, we definitely learned some things and came away with some some good pieces out of it. Um, the men's race was a little bit to, of a challenge for us too, just from the standpoint of our uh, number two guy wound up staying home uh, with a little ding, and so we wanted to we wanted to rest him and give him a little bit more time to recover, knowing that we've got the the conference in two weeks, and so that cost us probably about 40 points. <coughs> right there when you trade out your your number two guy for who's been running basically right with our number one and and then you replace him with somebody who's running five minutes 
or excuse me, about two minutes behind on the other end. You know that's gonna that's gonna make a big impact on your team score. So team score wise, we didn't look very good on this one, but we had some really good performances. Jacob Huber up front for us has been a solid number one. He was he's the first guy in in two years to go under 26 minutes for us, and and actually was uh, just a hair behind Travis Boos's time on that course two years ago, which was Travis's best year for us. Uh, Travis finished as an academic All-American that year. So if Jacob can continue to build and do what, build and work off of that pace, we're real excited about getting that done. And, and knowing that we've got two freshman guys that are pretty close to that as well is, is exciting. And I think that bodes well for us in the long run. What we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we're ready in two weeks to, to take care of that conference meet over in Spearfish. Questions? Um, they'll open it on Friday night. I don't know if we'll go over or not because it's, you know, it's an hour and a half trip for, I don't know if that's really worth it, but, um, it's, it's a different course. They haven't, um, Coach Schaefer's told me that it's pretty similar to one Dave Little used to run about 20 years ago or so, but, uh, it's on the front nine of the country club. Um, Coach Schaefer and I went out, drove out last week just to check it out a little bit and get a get a feel for it though so I don't I don't think it's anything too too challenging from that standpoint it's not like the back nine on the country club if you're familiar with that um, that one's basically up down or sideways and none of it's good <laughs> so any other questions all right thank you thanks coach nice job Saturday hard rocker volleyball was at home and uh, now big match tonight at Black Hill State. To preview it, Doug Tabbert. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Appreciate having everybody here. Uh, give you a little recap the last week. Uh, last Tuesday, we had Augustana here. Uh, they were ranked six in the country at the time. And again, they weren't ranked that high when we scheduled them. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's a good team. They've got uh, two big middles. They've got a, a right side that's a big kid. Um, Really good setter, senior setter, who's a, a, a transfer there. Actually, a Rapid City kid, really nice player. Uh, and their outsides were kind of really crafty, a couple, not real big arms, but just uh, really crafty and hit all the shots kind of player. So uh, that's a good team. Again, they're sixth ranked in the team in the country, and they're, they're legit. So that was a lot for us to deal with. Uh, we had some stretches at times. We played okay, but, uh, you know, that was a pretty big bite for us to, uh, to, to chew um, on Tuesday. So... Um, then this weekend, Shadron came in on Friday. Uh, they've been kind of up and down. Uh, they got a couple of kids, uh, Rudy LaSalle and Gabriella Varela, a couple of outside slash right side hitters. Uh, one's a junior, one's a senior. One was all conference last year and the other was honorable mention. Just real physical kids. Uh, they can kind of play into a match or play out of a match if you're Shadron State because they can be really good or they can be pretty high air. And, um, and we knew coming in we had to do a good job against those two. And uh, we did a decent job. They didn't, they didn't tear us up uh, big time. They took a few swings once in a while that we had no answer for. But uh, they didn't really light us up uh, too much. Um, but they had a couple other kids that did a little more damage than we thought uh, that we, we'd see based on scouting them and, and their stats and stuff. So it was competitive. We were close. I thought we were pretty game uh, on, on, uh, on Friday night. Um, a few plays here or there might have turned it for us. But... Uh, we played hard, and we were pretty competitive. We just, you know, they played hard too, and they had a, a little better offensively than we were at times. And then um, uh, Saturday with Regis. Regis is, is uh, picked to be one of the best teams in the conference this year, and they've kind of struggled out of the gate, and they've kind of got a little momentum going lately. But uh, they've got a right side uh, who's a senior, fifth-year senior, Katie Klein, uh, who was number seven if you were at the match. A really good player, one of the best in the conference uh, preseason candidate for player of the year. She actually got my vote for, for player of the year. Um, and they've got an outside named Maggie Stewart as a senior, big physical kid, really big arm, uh, hurt us quite a bit last year. And they've got a younger outside uh, kid out of Nebraska that's pretty good. So we knew going in that those three were where most of our offense was coming from. And we had to do a good job there. And their middles hadn't done that much, so we, we were hoping they, that, would, that trend would continue. Um, we did a really nice job on two of the three. We did a good job on Maggie Stewart uh, and the other outside. Um, held them 
kind of below their numbers and, and really didn't let them get too much going. Uh, we had 11 blocks in the match, which is huge for us. Uh, so uh, did a good job there. Um, it was a really competitive match. Uh, we got off to kind of a slow start in the first set, and that got away from us. But uh, um, second set, real close, and came back, won the third set. Uh, again, pretty tight set. Uh, played really well uh, in the fourth set. I think we were tied at 21 all or 22 all, uh, and you know felt like if we can just get to five, uh, all the pressure's on them, and, and uh, we got a really good chance here. And you know, it, volleyball, the momentum turns so quickly. Um, we were tied again at 21 or 22. Uh, one of our younger kids makes kind of a tight pass. Our setter goes up, tries to make a play on it, can't do it. Point there. Um, they set their best player the next rally. Uh, we know how we want to block her, but we don't line up quite the right way. She gets a kill, and that's two points in no time. And then, uh, and then that's you know, we just couldn't quite finish it. But uh, especially the second, the, the, the second half of the match. We played about as well as we played in a long time. So that was encouraging. Um, the difference was uh, they've got a Katie Klein, again, fifth-year senior. Um, uh, she had 20-some kills against us. She was just really good, and uh, we didn't quite have a, an answer for her. We had an answer for about everybody else, but uh, she was a, a bit much for us to deal with. So uh, and kind of, you know, she's one of those players that kind of take a team and, and put them on her back. Uh, and she did that a little bit Friday at Black Hills. And she definitely did that Saturday with us. So, uh, got to give her credit for playing well. And and um, but we were pretty pleased with with a lot of how we played, um, especially the second half of that match. Um, we're seeing some nice signs here. Um, uh, we're still playing without Kenzie DeVries, one of our outsides. Probably be without her for another week or so. Um, you know, that's we miss her. But uh, Karn Hazard, who's one of our, our other freshmen outside, double-digit kills both days. Uh, passed really well uh, both days. Doesn't always look good doing it. She's not a real graceful serve receiver, but um, she was passing money uh, both days, and that, that helped us a ton because Kenzie's our other top serve receiver and without her for a little bit longer. Um, Darla Dracon, who we've got playing on the left in Kenzie's spot right now, and that's a tough deal for her because she's a lefty uh, who doesn't have much experience playing on the, on the left side, and that's kind of like taking a, a left-handed kid and putting – him or her at third base or shortstop in, in baseball and softball. It's just, it's a, it's a tough thing uh, kind of mechanically uh, for a lefty to play on the left side. But um, she's getting some kills and she's, she's been, um, her offensive numbers have been respectable over there the last couple matches. So uh, we're getting some help from her there. Um, Hannah Stevenson, freshman out of, um, a right side out of Arizona, uh, had her best match of the year, had eight kills. Uh, hit 300 um, against Regis, who's a who's a solid team uh, on Saturday. So that was good to see. Uh, so we're making progress. We, we're still dealing with some injury stuff. Again, we won't have Kinsey for probably another week. Um, so we'll have some more people playing out of position. But uh, we're, we're making progress, and, and, and we're seeing it. And uh, hopefully, you guys are seeing it too a little bit, and you'll stick with us. But uh, uh, we're, you know, some some good things are happening. We just got to keep growing a little bit here. Uh, tonight, um, you know, it's obviously it's a big match for everybody. They've been struggling. We've been struggling. It doesn't really matter in this match. I told our kids last night the records don't mean anything. They're going to play really well because um, it's us. Hopefully we'll play really well because it's them. Um, to kind of look at them, uh, defensively they're really scrappy. Uh, they make a lot of plays defensively. They're hard to get kills against. Uh, they, they're blocking really well right now. The last two or three weeks they've blocked really well um, uh, against some good teams. Offensively is where they've been struggling. They, they've had a hard time generating a lot of offense, and uh, we've kind of been the opposite. Um, our offense has gotten better the last couple weeks, uh, and uh, defensively we've had a few issues. So uh, hopefully we can, we can uh, you know, be the better team offensively tonight and take advantage of, of some things. Uh, and um, hopefully defend well enough to keep giving them some, some issues with their offense. Uh, but it'll be a good match. Uh, it's a tough place to play for us. It's a, it's a loud place. They got a rough crowd. They, they're, pretty, they're pretty rough on our, our players, but we got, we've got to deal with that. Um, and uh, the other thing, they've got, they've got a, a senior setter, a senior libero, and a senior outside that have been around a while and play a lot of volleyball for them. So... Um, you know, we don't have that level of experience, so uh, the challenge for us will be can our young kids go in there and handle that environment and, 
and uh, and compete without getting kind of losing their heads too much. And, and hopefully that's the case. Had a good practice yesterday, and we like where we're at, so we'll, we'll hope we handle the, the situation well. Um, Brad's got some clips. I actually know what they are. Uh, this is from Saturday. Uh, this eventually, Anna and Hannah get a block here on the right side. I think the sixth, next clip is Darla uh, over on the getting a kill over here on the left. Yeah. I think we got another block here. Uh, this is Allie and, and uh, Allie Boggs and Emily over here on the. And that's important against them. Again, we had 11 blocks against Regis, which is you know, a pretty good number for a team as good offensively as they are. I think this is Emily's going to get a kill here. Uh, Emily Newton in the middle. And I think this last clip is Anna and uh, Anna Bright and Hannah Stevenson getting a block. To, uh, I think this wins the the third set if I'm if my notes are are accurate. Questions. Yeah, we just got to get them seasons a little bit, uh, more than a little bit. And we got to get them in the weight room. I mean, that, uh, Brett will have a big impact on us this, this spring. Uh, Hannah's got a really high ceiling, but you know, she's about as big around as this little thing here. Um, and uh, you know, she'll get more explosive and, and, uh, um, and, and stronger, and, and that'll be good. And same thing with Karin and Kinsey, um, you know, freshman playing on the left side. So. We, we see things. They haven't always equated to wins and losses yet, but uh, uh, we are making progress. And, you know, we just need some time. So, but thanks. All right, thanks. All right, Hard Rocker football, 5-1. and one, And it feels good. I know in the program they got a rule. I think it's even less than 24 hours they get to celebrate a win or something. I, I don't know exactly, but... That doesn't matter. I can celebrate a win for a long time. I'm, I can soak it up. Uh, Joel and I were on the road this weekend in a car. It's not conducive of watching Hard Rocker football online driving through Wyoming. It just doesn't quite work too well. Uh, but we were trying to get updates. Thought about texting Coach, but he's a little busy, I understand. So uh, we were getting updates from Larry Simonson and it turns out he doesn't give us very good updates either. He kind of gets into the game, and then we ended up getting the final score, and it was a good one. 44-17, welcome up head coach Zach Tinker. Thanks, Nate. No, it's uh, uh, car in Wyoming is not the best place to watch our game. There's no question. Uh, yeah, good, good victory for our boys going down in an Armac victory on the road. A uh, fun trip down to Las Vegas, New Mexico. Unique trip, um, and it was good for our, our guys. You know, anytime you take your team on the road, some interesting things happen. And so it was good to get our guys down there. Uh, unique environment for college football there. I thought our players handled it with maturity. We, we were not a, the best version of hard rocker football that we've ever been. Uh, but our goal when we go on the road in the RMAC is to try to score one more point than the other team. And, and that's what we were able to do on Saturday. Uh, I do think we probably have video, Brad. Is that what we're going to start with? I think let's look at some video of this, uh, of this contest. I'll do this so I can see better. You know, we had some, some, some really good, um, you know, individual efforts on Saturday. Oh, we ran the ball real well. This is early in the game. This is Marcus Sanchez. He had another catch like this today in practice. He's number 19. If you see Marcus, he's just really great at when the ball's in the air, going up and finding a way to make a catch. Um, this was a really nice throw by Jake. We ended up really not throwing the football very much on Saturday uh, because our guys in the run game were doing such a great job. But uh, this is one of the nice throws and catches in the game. You know, that's a tough play to make, play to make right there. That was really impressive. Probably one of the, the things that was best about Saturday, we did a great job rushing the quarterback. And here we come, uh, five sacks on the day. This is uh, Michael Harlan. 
uh, with the sack, running the little game here, and look at him get all the way to the quarterback. And, and every time you make a play like that, it's a big momentum play. This is the long touchdown run by Connor Silvera, a 71-yarder, and uh, great blocking by the guys up front, got him into the clear, and then uh, he was able to do the rest on his own. It's one of those plays. It's a little, little gap scheme play, and uh, he bounces it outside, and, and I, uh, he was able to finish it. He was able to finish it, so it was a great run by number six. He had a really, really big game, three touchdowns on the day. Uh, this is Jake Sullivan, a quarterback, running some of that zone read game. You guys have seen Jake. He's really good at, at running the football as a dual threat player, and he does it again here. Um, he, he's always a, a, a guy you've got to account for, not only throwing because he does a good job there, but he's doing a good job running the ball as well. This time we're going to hand it off to, to Dorian. I said we ran the ball really well on Saturday, and uh, Dorian Coart uh, punches it in. Great job by the old line creating a dent here down in the red zone and, and punching it into the end zone. And Dorian's had a really good first season for us, and, and uh, he, he deserved it. He was one of our game captains last week, voted on by the, the team captains. They decided to name him the game captain, and I thought he really performed when he had his chance. And then this is a touchdown to Kevin Mills. Uh, Sully throws it out there to Mills, and then great blocking to Marcus Sanchez and Damon Barnes. And Mills, he was able to, to get that thing across the end zone. And this is, uh, I think it was the second to last score of the game. But great blocking by those guys. Look at those guys getting blocked and then punching the ball into the end zone for some excitement. So that was a couple of the things we did in terms of being able to find a way to get a W. Again, 44-17 on Saturday. As we move forward, uh, just give you an idea of where we stand right now as everything plays out. Uh, the Armac invasion is still underway. Black Hill State, with the win on Saturday, is still in first place uh, at 5-1. and one. Colorado Mesa is 5-1, and one, and South Dakota Mines is 4-1. and one. If you look at this, uh, the, the reality for us is that we kind of control our own destiny in that conference race. So uh, if we take care of our business, uh, the results will be what we want at the end. We don't need any help from anybody. The only team we need help from uh, is the guys that are out here in this locker room. So uh, that's an exciting place to be at, at the halfway point of the year. The service players of the week, so these are the guys that helped us get ready for this past game. Uh, Joshua Seaton's an industrial engineer out of Bonnie Lake, Washington, and Darren Schroer is a tight end uh, mining engineer out of Lacey, Washington, and these guys are both going to be really good players, okay, really good players. Um, I, th I think they have some of that Seattle Seahawk mojo, uh, you know, being both from Washington helps them get ready for big games on, uh, at, for the Hard Rockers. Uh, next up is our... Enthusiastic player of the week, William V, interdisciplinary sciences major out of Sacramento, California. Will's one of our team captains, voted on by his teammates, number 55. And he's just one of the most enthusiastic kids you'll ever going to find. If you find Will uh, anywhere on campus, make eye contact and you'll get a great smile back. And, and uh, he, he looks mean in that photo, I know, okay? Uh, but if you do see him on campus, he's an awesome dude. Uh, Rocker Dog Defensive Player of the Week is linebacker Chris Counts, an industrial engineer out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, Chris has just had a great season for us. He's one of those guys you can really count on. Uh, great in the classroom. He's great on the football field. He's great in the weight room. Uh, there's really nothing he doesn't do well, um, and, and he's a high, high effort guy. He always works himself every single game to the point of absolute exhaustion and beyond. The high-octane player of the week was Connor Silvera, electrical engineer, Redding, California. Connor had three touchdowns on the day. I believe he had something silly like, like nine carries or ten carries for 150 yards, something, something really ridiculous in terms of his productivity. He was really good on Saturday. So we're going to need that kind of high-octane effort from him again this week if we're going to have a chance at Colorado Mines. And then our rocker, our SWAT player of the week, Blake Stone. Civil engineer out of right here in Rapid City, South Dakota. Blake had a touchdown-saving tackle on a, on a return play, uh, and, and then we were able to hold him defensively and keep him out of the end zone right there at a crucial point in the first half. So uh, Blake did an outstanding job. As we move forward, you know, it, it gets real on Saturday as we go down to, to, to face Colorado Mines in Golden, Colorado. It's going to be a beautiful day for football. It's going to be up around 80 degrees. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be hard rocker weather. Uh, it's going to be a great challenge. They're 4-2. and two. Uh, uh, Both losses are in league, but they're back in the title hunt uh, with Mesa's loss last week, uh, and they're ready to go. And, and we're excited for this game. Our football team's excited for this opportunity. We had a morning practice today that was high energy, that had a ton of juice.
juice, and our kids are excited and ready to go play. So uh, it's a huge challenge. We know we're, we're facing one of the really great offenses. And, and realistically, Justin Dvorak, their quarterback, is the finest Division II player I've ever prepared to play against. He's a really special player. And our guys cannot wait for the opportunity to compete against him on Saturday. So uh, any questions on where we are, where we're going? Nothing surprises me in this league right now, Tom, especially when you go on the road in the RMAC. You go on the road in the RMAC, you're just trying to win a game and get out of there with, with a W. Uh, it's difficult to travel for, for some of these schools. You know, when they come up to the, to the Black Hills region, it's tough to come up here and play, and we try to take advantage of that, you know. And we've been really good at home. Uh, Black Hill State's been really good at home this season, and, and I think it's because it's hard to win in this league on the road, and you better be prepared. Uh, we went down to New Mexico Highlands, and, and that's a tough place to play, and you've got to be ready to go. So nothing surprises me in terms, of, in terms of road games in this league. You know, If that game would have been a Mesa, that would have been somewhat of a surprise to me, but on the road, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, Joel. Yeah, Joel's talking about Coach Brett McGez. Coach Brett McGez is our, our strength and conditioning uh, coordinator here at, at South Dakota Mines, and, and he brings the juice every single day, you know. And, and in every way, he's touching our athletes, changing their lives. Our players that were here in the summertime, we had a bunch of players that stayed all summer long uh, to commit themselves to this football program, and they worked every single day in that weight room. And Coach McGez was there at 6 a.m. in the morning till 9 o'clock at night preparing our young men for these contests. And he brings the energy every single time I, I so there are times when I have to to, to, to pull them back a little bit because it's so much energy but I have always said that in life I'd rather uh, you know be in a situation where I have to pump somebody's brakes than mash the gas for them okay you know I want to have to pull them back as opposed to fire them up you know uh, because in life you know people you have to push and motivate all the time don't go very far uh, but guys who are internally motivated and bring the juice every single day they're going to give you winning effort and that's what Brett does for us on a day in day out basis and we have, in my opinion, the best strength staff in the entire Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, and we're really proud of them. Yeah, Coach Larson. Yeah. You know, Ryan's asking really about it. You know, how do you come back from a big win on the at home and and kind of go on the road and play an opponent that hasn't had success yet? And uh, when you're dealing with young players, I mean, we all know this now. Um, they're going to believe what they hear, you know, and I think sometimes our guys start to believe that, man, we're we're, we're unbelievable. You know, we're the greatest team ever. Well, not probably not, okay? Uh, we got a lot to work on. You know, we got a lot to work on. So it does take a lot to get those guys ready to go again. But this is a focused team. If it comes from the coaches, it's just never going to go very far, Ryan. That's my opinion. It doesn't come from our coaching staff. I don't really do that much in terms of keeping the football team on point. The senior class, we have 20 seniors who bleed this, okay? If you cut them open, it's blue and gold that's going to bleed out, I promise you. And those guys, they lead this football program. They're the ones who, who, who center this group up. And we talk really about us not being a football team anymore, but a football family. And that's because of the senior class. They're the ones who lead this thing and drive the bus. So if it comes from the coaches, it just doesn't go very far. This comes from the David Jackpors, the William V's, the, the guys in this program that the Marcus Sanchez is Rashad Ridley's the seniors in this program Jameer Moore you're talking about Dominic Martinez David Jack Poor is unbelievable um, these guys that's where this thing comes from it doesn't really come from the coaches so when you have a mature team has been through it you're going to be better off and that's where we stand right now and that's why I'm excited to take this team down here and give Colorado Mines a run for their money and I uh, cannot wait for the challenge that awaits us on Saturday an opportunity to beat somebody in the top 25 which we've not done here before and uh, cannot wait for that challenge What happened to the money flag is the question. Uh, you know, that's an excellent question that I don't have an answer for at this particular time. We had a long discussion about the money flag as who's going to be in charge. We were a little light on our travel roster this past week, so we were all hands on deck in terms of performance and not as much on the money flag. But it hurt us because we were uh, pretty lousy offensively on, on third downs. So we may designate someone specifically on this trip as a money flag man. 
But we were down a couple people on the trip, which is why. It won't be me. Although that might be my best role. That's what I should do. Yeah, Tom. Game plan against Colorado Mines. Yeah, you, you, yeah. What do you do? What do you do against this offense and and what they're capable of? Um, you're going to see two of the best quarterbacks in in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference on Saturday. There's no question. I mean, these two guys, they're good players. Uh, you're not going to stop them. You know, you have to find a way to try to limit some of their opportunities. You got to do a great job when the ball's in the air. And one of the things about Dvorak that I think is awesome, he's a little bit like a Brett Favre, is that he'll throw it now. He'll throw it into just about anything, okay? Uh, he would try to throw the ball through a keyhole right now on the other side of the room. He wouldn't care. Uh, he's got no conscience when it comes to that. He's just, a, he's just got such a competitor's mindset, similar to our guy. Our guy will do the same. He's, he's going to go and try to compete and win. So you got to try to, when the ball's in the air, kind of win some 50 50 balls, you know? Uh, caused some mistakes in the games they've lost they've made some mistakes offensively frankly um, and so we got to force some of those mistakes and we're going to get this game into the fourth quarter and try to win the thing in the fourth quarter that's what our plan is we've run the ball really effectively all season we've thrown the ball effectively all season we've defended the run better than we've ever defended the run here before and so I think we're going to give ourselves a good chance to make it a competitive fight but it's going to be a fight. It's going to be it's going to be 60 minutes, maybe 60 minutes plus before there's a decision made on Saturday and and our our plan is to be in the fight till the very very end. Okay, rock on. All right, we are excited about the matchup against Colorado Mines this week on the road. We are also excited about coming back home next weekend. And a special thing going on we kind of want to unveil here today is uh, the Hard Rockers are going to be wearing a special jersey for the Shadron State matchup. You can see it up on the screen. So for everybody uh, watching online as well, this is for alumni, parents, Hard Rocker fans of all walks of life. We're going to be wearing a special jersey that day, October 22nd, against Shadron State, which I'm holding up right here. I actually have one right here. This is Marshall Gleason's. Uh, jersey right here that he's going to be wearing and the good thing about it is we have a great supporter and a sponsor to help us do this uh, Northwestern Mutual so then we're going to auction off the jerseys which the auction is open right now best way to get there Brad's probably GoRockers.com right you can see the specific website up on the screen but GoRockers.com has a link right there it'll take you to the auction so all the way from 1 to 99 Get your favorite jersey, and the benefits are going to benefit Hard Rocker football and the Alex Lemonade Stand, uh, which is a great charity to fight childhood cancer uh, close to Northwestern Mutual's interest as well. So to expand on a little bit, can you welcome up? He's a Hard Rock Club board member. He's also Northwestern Mutual uh, representative, Matt Martin. Come on up, Matt. This would fit you, I think. I love it because I love Marshall Gleason. That kid's a riot. Um, I'm bad with mics. He really said everything. We're super excited. I know Coach isn't looking ahead to Chadron State. I am. Uh, we haven't played Chadron since 1995. I'm excited that we get a shot at Chadron State, especially coming in 6-1. and one. Get a win at Chadron. We're 7-1. and one. I'm really excited. Except about, excited about what we're doing. So we have purchased, like Nate said, 1 through 99. Half the money raised is going back to Coach Tinker in the program. The other half, Coach Tinker and the, and the Hard Rocker football, has decided to give back to Alex's lemonade stand, which is helping kids fight childhood cancer, right? You'd be amazed at how many people in Rapid City area are fighting it. We have a little girl, Cameron. We're doing a 5K. Thank you, Coach Larson and your players. They've moved their practice for us for the 5K. Mackenzie's coming out, bringing some girls. And they're going to help out. We're doing a 5K the morning of the football game against Shadron State. Money is going to Cameron and her family, two years old, and she has inoperable brain tumor. Um, I love kids. I love this program. And for us to join, Coach Tinker, Nate, Zach, Tiffany, Brad, everything you guys have done to make this happen, I can't thank you guys enough. We're super excited. Um, share it on Facebook, friends, family, whoever. The more money we raise, the bigger impact we have. And that's what we're about, is having an impact on these kids and this program. So we've got a little less than two weeks to bid on it. I know number 34 is hot. Bid that number up as high as you can. 
Um, oh, you're also all invited. We're doing a, I have a world-class smoker barbecuer coming in. He's going to cook. Jay Steele um, is going to cook for everybody. You're all invited. Um, we will have adult beverages up there. We'll have an awesome dinner. You're all invited. It's a free will donation. We have some kids who have fought, who are fighting cancer at the game as well. We'll honor them. They'll be up there. We'll have two lemonade stands. We're going to have our lemonade. Cancer sucks suckers. We're excited. We're excited about this weekend, but we're really excited about this and everything the coaches have done for us. Questions? We'd love, love to talk about Michigan football if we have time, too. I can take questions on that. Thank you very much, Matt. That is going to be a great thing. We'll promote that again next week. That's going to be a big deal. So I invite you to go to GoRockers.com. The auction has started, and uh, get your jersey. Parents, alumni, everybody uh, should be a great thing and benefiting two, uh, two uh, great things going, going on as well, the program and Alex Lemonade Stand. So we're excited. Hope everybody has a great week. Go Hard Rockers. We'll see you back at Pizza Ranch next week. Tuesday, all right, at Pizza Ranch. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for coming.